Mayor Clark? Here. Council President Robinson? Here. Councilor Henderson? Here. Councilor King? Here. Councilor Harris? Here. Councilor Kuyper? Here. And Councilor Cook currently is absent. Okay, we've got the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Second. I'll All second. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the consent agenda. Approval of March 17, 2015, City Council meeting minutes. Resolution 2015-035, approving the City Recorder's canvassing of the returns of the March 10, 2015, Washington County election and directing the City Recorder to enter the results into the record. Resolution 2015-036, appointing Kurt Studer to the Budget Committee. Resolution 2015-037, appointing Christopher Flores to the Planning Commission. Resolution 2015-038, appointing Michael Meyer to the Planning Commission. <coughs> Resolution 2015-039, reappointing Christine McGoughlin to the Library Advisory Board. Do I have a motion to approve the consent? I motion to approve the consent agenda. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Presentation, Eagle Scout recognition. All right, I have, I see an Eagle Scout right there. Is this Miles Camp? Come on forward. Welcome, Miles. Yes, go ahead and sit. Push the button until the ring turns green and you are on. Thank you. Oh, oh no. no. No, there we go. There we go. Got it. All right. <laughs> okay. It's a little like Frogger. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Miles, okay. welcome. And um, thank you for coming tonight. Well, we wanted to congratulate you on your Eagle Scout Award and hear all about it. So tell us all about your... All right. So um, for my Eagle Project, I built a new sign for my church, which is which now is which is on Sherwood Boulevard, like which is right down the road. My church was in, my church was in the process of changing their name from Sherwood Presbyterian Church to Cedar Creek Church, which what which that is what it is now in March of last year and we needed a new sign so I volunteered to build it, let my pastor know. And first I got a permit from the city, then I went to Home Depot and they donated all the materials that was needed for the sign. And so next I, I had to get people to actually build the sign. So I went to my, I announced the two Saturdays that I'd be working. And I told them that my scout troop, once, troop 116, um, at the meetings, and I told them that I'd be feeding them pizza. So that encouraged them. <laughs> all right. Um, on the first day, we dug the holes and put, filled them with cement and planted the posts. It was really it was really sunny that day, so that was a good day to work. Um, and the second day, however, it was pouring rain and miserable. So, but we persevered building the framework and we put the actual sign on. And then over these two Saturdays, I instructed the boys on how to do it. I led them as they built the sign. So, but it was a hard experience, but I'm glad I went through it. So thank. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Did, does council have any questions for Miles? I just wanted to tell you, I saw the sign and I thought, that's a really great sign. It's really nice. Thank you. All right, Miles. Well, thank you very much. And I'll come down. We have um, a second Eagle Scout uh, that could not make it tonight, Riley Dixon. Oh, you are here! Oh, yay! <laughs> okay, well, come on up. I, I didn't get the RSVP for you, so welcome. I'm so glad that you're able to make it. So, Riley, tell us about your project. Yeah, so um, my project, what I did is I built flower beds for Middleton Elementary School. I did six flower beds, four by eight. And uh, my job 
is I do flower beds as a job. I work with a call with a business called Griffin's Gardens. And so he's the one who Preston Griffin is the one who donated the wood to me. And I had about seven or eight guys come down to the shop and I showed them how to make flower beds. And so they helped make all six beds and I led that. And then we went over to uh, Middleton a couple days later and um, just placed them in there and uh, just did the finishing touches and kind of talked to the school about where they wanted the placement of the boxes. Fantastic. Council, did you have any questions? I just want to say that um, I know both Riley and Miles, and I know that you guys put a lot of work and effort, and you both have amazing work ethics, and I just want to congratulate both of you on your accomplishment. Thank you. Right. Congratulations, and I will bring you your stuff. All right, we have next citizen comments. I have uh, a couple of already filled out forms. If anyone else would like to make a citizen comment, feel free to fill out a form and we'll recognize you to the floor. Jim, I want to say Felsky. Yes. Come on forward. He's already got the mic live for you, so. Okay. And Sylvia will have the timer there and you'll have four minutes to comment. Well, I don't, ha I don't have a, a lot to say other than my wife and I live at 14391 Southwest Fair Oaks Drive and every day weather permitting if possible, my wife and I take our dog for a walk and we have to cross Murdoch from Fair Oaks Drive. And we'd sure like to see some kind of crosswalk put up there because I listen to the news every night and it seems like several times a week there's a pedestrian fatality in the Portland area and I'd hate to see one out here because that is a tough road to cross at times. So anything that could be done to accelerate the process of getting some type of crosswalk put in there at Fair Oaks Drive and Murdoch would be greatly appreciated. All right. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. And Cynthia Folsky. First of all, I want to Thank you for giving us some time to say this, but we do, and I, that's my husband, and so he laid the foundation for this. And we have about 11 children in our area that cross this street, at least, and nobody crosses it less than two times a day. And uh, it, it does, people do come down that hill. I don't know if you're familiar with Murdoch, but you come down that hill and they come pretty fast. And <clears throat> we have found that a lot of people, when we're standing there, will not stop. And you have to wait until all the traffic from both sections are on. But we just don't want to see anybody get hurt. And it would be great to have, you know, like a little button you could push and, and a little flashing light or something like that. But just stripes on the road. In fact, we one of my neighbors <laughs> mentioned that they would like to go out about midnight and <laughs> put stripes on the road mm -hmm. for us to cross, and but we were afraid we'd get arrested. So, so anyway, that's that me here's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see us uh, out there, all four older people, <laughs> you know, out there with flashlights and paint. Okay. But anyway, so I have a question. Where exactly is that intersection of Pharaoh? It, it would be Murray? one street would be Willamette Street. If you know where that yes, is, I do. Okay. and the other one is our Fair Oaks Drive. It's just past the, I guess the Murdoch Apartments. Mm -hmm. As you're going yes. up the hill, going south, I guess, and um, on the other side of is the um, Wildlife Refuge and uh, and the Blackberry Bushes and all that. So we're that first street there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Kurt Christensen.
Kurt Christensen, 22520 uh, Murdoch. And this project we've been working on for almost a year. And um, I just got an email from uh, Joe saying that they are working on it. Pretty much the safety study that was done by Mr. Galati a year ago has some impressive uh, numbers on them. In the middle of the day, there's between 200 and 300 cars an hour coming across Murdoch. And we've been living there for a long time, and it's getting kind of skip and hop to get across that road. Uh, even in the morning when we go for walks um, and we have lights on our head, the cars, they still don't stop. They just keep right on coming. Going downhill, they're doing 55 miles an hour. I printed out a copy for each one of you that I, I'll give to Sylvia. And just so that you don't think that it's just people over in Murdoch that's concerned about their safety, when I drive to school in the morning and I go down Sunset, I see kids right past Archer Glen. There's two or three places where the same thing is sort of happening. The traffic is not as bad, but I think we should take a look at safe crosswalks all over the city so that we don't have a fatality, so we don't get any of our kids killed or some of us older folks um, if the city needs to construct uh, a really cool uh, cross-section there, I appreciate that. But I would really more appreciate that we get something put up in the meantime uh, so that we can cross that. Uh, the police have had their flashing uh, signal up a couple of weeks in the back. They took it down when the battery ran out. And I stood and watched when that signal was coming on, blinking. And for about a week, it changed the be total behavior of the people. You could just see a whole row of cars, the red lights coming on. It was hugely effective. And I, I've looked at how that same blinking light right in front of Archer Glen comes on and it shows what speed that you're doing. So we're talking about modifying people's driving behavior. So think about, you know, I, I appreciate, Joe, that uh, there are design parameters that, you know, has to be done. Uh, but while we're working through those budgets and design issues, uh, either uh, the blinking signal over there, parked over there again, would be a great use or something of a similar nature. A few more tickets probably wouldn't hurt either. So, so I will give you the copies. Nancy Bates. Good evening. Um, I'm not going to be a broken record, so I'll try to keep my brief, uh, my message is brief here. But my name is Nancy Bates, and I too reside in the Fair Oaks Division. Um, and I am interested in uh, supporting some traffic control at the intersection of Murdoch, Fair Oaks, and Willamette Drive. Um, I've been a resident here for 24 years, and for the past year, as, as Kurt and several of the other residents have mentioned, we have attempted to try to get some sort of traffic control in that area. Um, it is very difficult to cross the street. My husband and I both walk daily, and we cross that um, intersection twice. Um, every day, and very few drivers recognize their obligation to stop 
at that unmarked um, intersection. It's not uncommon for us to wait for like 20 or more cars to go by, particularly um, during high traffic times. Um, frankly, we're almost shocked when a driver stops and you know we wave and we try to encourage them to continue to do that, but um, it is not common for them to do that. And, and sadly, um, we even see a Portland motorcycle officer you know, just pass us by as we're standing at the intersection. So it's just, I don't know if it's not well noticed or what, but it is not a common um, occurrence to see uh, pedestrian, pedestrians allowed to cross um, ahead of the drivers. And as Kurt mentioned, the speed studies that have been conducted by the city in the past year have demonstrated significant um, percentage of drivers substantially going over the 35 mile per hour limit. So I would strongly encourage that the city introduce some form of measures to control this intersection so that both pedestrians and dra drivers will be safe as they negotiate that intersection. And I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward, um, Fair Oaks neighborhood. Uh, I appreciate hearing your concerns, and I think that I echo those concerns. We want to have safe routes. Um, a few months ago, I went to the Washington County Coordinating Committee, and there was a presentation from Safe Routes to School program. And um, so I immediately went up to that representative, and um, City Manager Joe Gall and I are going to be meeting with them soon um, because we would like to have safe routes to school um, all over our city uh, where we have ending sidewalks and no crosswalks. And um, these, these um, improvements do not come without cost. And so if we can find that cost elsewhere um, in these programs, we, we want to make sure that we are looking for that. So I will add this request to that list when we meet with them. And uh, I appreciate your concerns. Thank you for coming. Wade Anderson. Good evening, I'm Wade Anderson I'm from here in Sherwood. Um, I'd like to take a quick moment to let the council know about two items that I think are maybe of interest to citizens in Sherwood. Uh, the first is the community garden. And uh, while I know the city's researching the creation of a community garden, and that's a good thing, uh, you may not be aware that Sherwood already has two that are shovel ready and have been here for several years. Uh, both gardens are open to any, anyone. One is at the Sherwood Community Friends Church, 23264 Southwest Main Street, and their website's sherwoodfriends.org. The other is at Cedar Creek Church, 21901 Southwest Sherwood Boulevard, and their website is cedarcreeksherwood.org. I'm most familiar with the uh, garden at Cedar Creek Church. By far, most of those that have a plot there are not members of the church. There's, I think there's maybe three plots that have members that are the rest are, are folks from the community. Cedar Creek Church's planning day is this Saturday, April 11th from 9 to 11. And on May 16th from 9 to 11, there's a meet and greet for fellow gardeners and a local nursery will be bringing the warm crop items like uh, tomatoes and stuff that are available at discounted prices. I don't know about you, I have trouble growing tomatoes without something like that. Both gardens are a great resource to our community. Uh, the second event is the Running Water 5K, which is on Saturday, May 9th. Uh, most of us live in homes that are within fewer than 12 steps to a clean water source. I didn't realize until recently that a child under five dies every minute as a result of diarrhea caused by contaminated water, poor sanitation, and unsafe hygiene practices. Five years ago, our family started participating in running water. It's a chip timed uh, from, from Uberthon's 5K. It's run here in Sherwood. 100% of the proceeds go toward providing fresh water wells to the residents of Zambia, Africa. It's amazing to me how a cup of water can have such an impact, transforming the health and a village and freeing up countless hours each week so children can receive education. Parents, and especially women, can have time to help provide for their growing family. It's really been a transformation for women in these villages. I'm encouraging our citizens to join my family on Saturday, May 9th at 8.30 for this great community event. The run walk starts at the Senior Center parking lot. If you're not available that weekend and still would like to take a part, you can, of course, sponsor somebody else to walk or run in your place. Uh, more information is available at runningwater5k.org. So, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more citizen comments? Okay. New business, resolution 2015-040, authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract for the Highland and Orcutt Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project. Craig Sheldon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> so uh, we're asking uh, 
for authorization with the city manager to execute a contract with k and r plumbing construction company which was the lowest responsible bidder we received on this project little background we were doing uh, routine maintenance uh, video inspection and uh, come across the bad two sets of bad sewer lines that uh, had bad ratings you have a five on a scale of five when you rate a sewer line and uh, we had a lot of fours and fives throughout the system uh, which uh, can create issues for maintenance as well as uh, property owners in the future so we'd like to be able to go in and uh, replace these two sections of uh, sewer line We'd use a pipe bursting method to minimize uh, the impact of the property owners where it's very tight space in this area. And uh, we did advertise in the Daily Journal of Commerce on the 11th and 13th of March with a mandatory bidding on the 17th of March. And k &R was the lowest responsible bidder, as I said. Uh, we'd like, uh, the contract is for 172,884. We'd like a 15% contingency. Uh, we do run into problems when we're trying to reconnect uh, old existing sewer lines, so I'm sure we will use some of that, and, as well as uh, working in the tight uh, space that we have. With it, so the total would be 198816 we're asking for. Okay, Council, any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Greg, um, what was the second highest bid? Second highest bid was 121,000 for both projects. So uh, actually, the second highest, the K and R plumbing on the actual Orchid was 70,295, and the low bid was 64,846 on that one. And on Highland Street, the high bid was 121,997, and the low bid was 108,038. So how much lower or higher was that from this total amount? Um, 20 on the first. Yeah. So that was 192, 292. Okay. I had to get my security code to work on that. <laughs> is there any concern that it can't be done for 172 any concern that it can't it can be done for the 172 there's some stuff in here that we're going to try to save a little bit of money on but when you just like we went into lincoln street last year when you start uh trying to hook up to existing sewer lines there could be additional costs there uh, and you are very tight with the existing sewer and the water lines and other utilities in the area so it's not like a newly developed street so we will use some of that contingency i'm sure throughout the project but there's going to be there's probably going to be some savings on the 172 so i can't tell you i'd just rather go in with 15 percent and when it comes okay. in under that that'd be great how old are the lines on you know i don't know when that was put in exactly whenever that development's it's probably it's 40, quite a few 50. years ago any other questions? Do I have a motion? I'll move that we recapture and adopt resolution 2015040 authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract for the Highland and Orcutt Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Council announcements. Councilor King. I just want to thank everyone who voted in the last election and for my supporters, and I'll leave it at that. Councilor um, I want um, to, none of my boards met this month, have met in a long time, but um, nothing for anything but the library who is constantly having activities and events. So, um, the, I'll just tell you about the author Tony Russo Hamilton and illustrator Britta Nicholson will be here on Saturday at one o'clock um, to uh, talk and <coughs> tell their kids and adults who join them about food and all the wonderful things about how to grow your food and everything sustainable living and that sort of thing. So. If, if those things are fun for you and interesting to your little ones, I would join them at 1 o'clock on Saturday. 
Um, and next, the National Library Week, which has been celebrated since 1958, is coming up. There's um, a bunch of events happening here in Sherwood, and you can check the uh, events out online, but they're happening at all libraries across the region, too. So um, some of the major ones here, um, the six-word contest will be ending that week, and I'm pretty excited because they asked me to be a judge. So I will be judging some of those, and I have had a kick reading some of these stories. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are not appropriate, and that's fun, and some of them are quite entertaining. So, uh, Also, the Art of the Story Storytelling Festival will kind of round everything out on April 18th um, over at the Center for the Arts at 6.30. Uh, that uh, is going to be a really, really fun event, so I would encourage everybody to go. It's free and um, should be pretty fun. 503 Uncorked will be there. I know I've said this every week, but it's quickly approaching. April 18th seemed really far away a few weeks ago, but it's right around the corner. So uh, that's all I have. I'm sorry to interrupt you, um, Council President Robinson. I uh, was remiss in not going you can to continue to okay. do us afterwards. All right, because I, I, I feel bad. Don't so worry. go ahead. Go ahead, <laughs> Council President. Well, um, we had another Citizen Advisory Committee um, meeting with the Sherwood West Concept Plan um, last week, and it was really interesting. Um, <laughs> we talked about um, the Sherwood uh, housing needs <laughs> analysis and um, very, very um, large amount of information, but it was extremely informative. And um, we had a great group. We met at the police station, and um, it was a much better um, facility to meet, and people could hear things. Um, so it was really very awesome. Um, the um, coordinator that we are consultant is just fabulous in moving things along and making sure that we all get the information that she had planned on, on uh, presenting or having her people present. And um, I just encourage you all to... Um, are those online? Can you watch those yes. videos? Um, or are they taped? No, the, video, the meetings are not videotaped. The information is online, okay. including the draft housing needs analysis. So. Okay. So if you are interested, please um, take what steps you care to do. It's very, very interesting information. And then um, one of our more exciting events uh, for Planning Commission next week on the 14th is a public hearing on our medical marijuana dispensaries. And so I urge all of you to come and listen to what the Planning Commission has come up with, with staff's uh, recommendations for language that will regulate um, the placement of medical marijuana facilities. Um, we are not touching recreational marijuana at this point in time. Um, OLCC is developing those regulations on the state level right now. So, um, but this is kind of the first step. And um, we'd love to have lots of people come and give us your thoughts on that. Um, and that will be coming to the council um, shortly after our um, public hearing next week. Actually, just to piggyback, I was going to mention this is likely to be April 28th, assuming the Planning Commission acts on the 14th. Um, we have tentatively and we have a quorum to have a special council meeting on April 28th to consider that item if the Planning Commission makes a decision on the 14th. So. Very well. Okay. <clears throat> Um, just to let people know, the high school is doing the production of Thoroughly Modern Melly, which opens April 24th, runs through the 26th, so it's a two-weekend run, and then again from May 1st to uh, <coughs> May 3rd at the high school. And um, we have Into the Woods auditions next week on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Crossroads Church. Um, our police advisory board met on the 19th. And it was an interesting meeting. It's a brand new board, so um, they're spending a lot of time just getting up to speed. Um, the chief did a great job. At, at, he brought Sylvia along to go over um, requirements of public officials and give people opportunity, gives members opportunity to ask questions. Angie was there taking notes. And everybody basically had an opportunity to talk about 
uh, where they're from, why they're interested in it. They elected a chair and a vice chair. And um, they had a special meeting to forward um, concerns to the council about medicinal marijuana and locations. I didn't make that meeting due to a death in the family, but um, I know that they met again so that they'd have the opportunity to send some information um, to the council. And um, I would was wondering if staff could give an update or maybe you can give an update on the dog park. Yes. I've had people, okay, I'll let you handle that. And um, I just wanted to ask staff, there's, there's oh, well, I guess Tom's here. Um, I had a citizen ask me about political signs in county right of way. Are political signs supposed to be in the county right of way? I.e., Roy Rogers, Oregon Street, and Edie, I guess. So, I assume you're talking about inside the city limits, correct? Um, yeah, well, I don't know why I would care outside the city limits, okay. but yes. <laughs> Yeah, let me let me check into that. I mean, I know that we've um, looked at that issue before, and uh, but I don't know off the top of my head whether or not um, we can enforce our sign code inside there right away. I believe that we can, but let me let me. Well, I thought it was actually sign. the county's in code that didn't want political signs in the public right of way in Washington County streets. Unless so, Mark knows the answer to that question, we'll look into it and get back. Yeah, to I don't know. Send a because I wasn't. Obviously. We've reviewed it so many times that. The county may have updated their sign code but recently, I don't know. But um, somebody asked me, and I said I'd ask staff, so. Yes, we'll get back to you. That's all I have, thank you. We had a resident come um, at the, our last council meeting asking about the senior center. Do you have a senior center update for us? We have not had a meeting, uh, unless they had a meeting the week my brother-in-law died or during spring break. So. Do you know when the next meeting is for them? Um, and I'd ask Kristen Schweitzer, but she's not here, and she's my liaison. Staff That's okay. Well. I want to announce that uh, Archer Glen is going to be hosting their Eagle Marketplace and Fair on April 17th, from, uh, starting at 4 o'clock. This event is a tremendous, always a tremendous success and a lot of fun, so I encourage participants from throughout the community. Okay, yes. So the Parks and Recreation Board met on Monday, last night, and a couple of things to report. Um, there will be a neighborhood public meeting on April 20th upstairs in the mezzanine at 7 p.m. And that will be where the, the final design uh, for the Woodhaven Park will be, the phase two piece of it will be displayed, and citizens can comment on that. Um, and they'll be taking comments and ideas, and they'll bring those back to the Parks and Recreation Board in May. And then they'll discuss that and come up with a final plan. So that's moving along, and they're very excited to have something to do on the Parks and Rec Board. Um, there's also another uh, uh, announcement, which is the dog park. And the city staff, Kristen Schweitzer, is working with Mears Design Group, and they are in the process of finalizing the design. So we could potentially have dogs barking uh, probably in <laughs> September, October. The, they'll break ground sometime in July once the funds get allocated. So there'll be a whole lot of barking going on. Um, also for schools, I believe the Hopkins Hoop Doo Carnival is this Friday. So for those of you who are watching the video before Friday, from 4 to 8, I believe, is when the fun will be. And then one other item is the Robin Hood Festival is now accepting applications for Maid Marian Court. So if you have a daughter that is in elementary school, and I believe they skip middle school, and then so the younger court and then the senior court is the high schooler. So uh, my daughter participated last year, had a great time. It's a great service opportunity for the girls. They do a lot, and um, it's, a, it's a fun fun time for them. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, one quick follow-up on the dog park, yes. um, which will be in my proposed budget to um, allocate funds. I did just find out that the Bark for Your Park contest that we participated yeah. last year, which was a national competition that we actually made it very close to being in the finals, um, is going to be back up again in May. Mm. So we will probably spearhead that effort, that community effort to try to 
um, get folks to support the dog park. Um, the winning community uh, receives $100,000 for their dog park. And I believe there's four runner-up communities that receive 25000 So we're going to solicit that um, outside dollars like we did last year. And we were very close last year. So watch for that so you'll be able to bark for your park. Um, <laughs> one of the comments, and we're not going to get into the design of potentially what could happen out on Murdoch, but staff has been working on some alternatives and um, we're in budget season right now and I am probably dealing with about four or five other pedestrian safety improvements and requests from neighborhoods um, that we're juggling. Um, one of those is actually um, the location where someone was tragically killed crossing the street, which has a lot of pedestrian volume, which is over by the new shopping center. Um, we do not have endless amounts of money within our budget. Uh, we have constraints in terms of where we can do improvements, and we get requests throughout the city. So um, Murdoch is one we've been evaluating, and, and we may do some improvements there. Um, but it is juggled with others throughout the community. Um, another one that I just received, actually the mayor received a, a concern, was where the stop sign is over by um, Snyder Park. People were... Um, just blowing through that stop, stop sign, especially at rush hour. It's mm -hmm. like it doesn't exist. And Craig's got some ideas to put some enhancements to try to reduce uh, the problems at that stop sign where there is supposed to be a stop and people are not driving and obeying the law. All of those things cost money. And I think if we could fund every pedestrian improvement in town, um, when you get the CIP in a few weeks, the capital improvement program, you will see a tremendous amount of pedestrian improvements, sidewalk infills, other types of things throughout the community. We can't fund them all, quite honestly. So um, I will be seeking your input as a council in terms of priorities, because you're going to see more projects than what we can fund. So that's coming. Um, um, we don't go out and just put improvements in because a neighborhood has expressed some desire or some need. Um, I want to respect the folks' concern, but um, there are others that we are um, considering as well. So I just wanted to follow up on that. Um, and last but not least, and Tom has an item he wanted to bring to the attention of the council. Um, we are in budget season. We're finalizing, I'm finalizing, and making some decisions in terms of um, releasing my proposed budget. It will be released publicly and to the council on May 1st. Um, your first budget committee meeting is on May 13th. So we're going to switch gears after your next meeting, after you get done with recreational, or not recreational, medical marijuana, and quickly switch gears to budget. So, Tom, you had an item you wanted to, to share. Sure, yeah. I just wanted to um, <clears throat> take this opportunity, since we're starting to run out of time, to um, remind uh, all the counselors and everyone here and anyone who might be listening that we are <clears throat> soliciting requests for proposals for the um, lease space at the Center for the Arts. Um, we have advertised in the Gazette, the Tiger Times, the Daily Journal of Commerce. We have signs out on the site, signs on the building, and um, we have uh, selected a realtor, a real estate firm to help us with this, um, this process. And so uh, towards the end of this month, uh, beginning of May, we're going to be taking requests for proposals that we get, and hopefully we get a fair number um, of people who are interested in being there and we'll go through a selection process to see if um, which one of those will be complementary to the center and um, go through those and hopefully end up uh, getting that space lease so I just wanted to mention it um, we will be very close to the end of the, the time at our next council meeting but I uh, just wanted to, to remind people that that opportunity is there and we are really excited about trying to get uh, that space leased as soon as we can thank you Tom Any questions? Okay. Um, so I wanted to give my report. Uh, last week, uh, Jennifer Harris and I went to uh, visit the Beaverton Community Gardens and um, several members of staff. And there were two community gardens there that we had the opportunity to view. Uh, it was very exciting. They had uh, great ideas. And our two key staff people um, got paired up so that we do not have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, it's been done in other communities, and so we're going to tap into 
their resources and um, give the very best product to our citizens that we possibly can. So it, was a, it was a fun day. Um, and they're also two very different. One's a little mm -hmm. bit more urban and the other one's a little bit more rural uh, community garden. So you also have um, different choices there. So that was kind of fun. Uh, then on the first, I was, I, I was very excited to attend the Industrial Partners Recognition Awards where one of our businesses here in Sherwood received an award from Clean Water Services Cascade Columbia Distribution. Um, and the award is for their responsible stewardship of the Tualatin watershed. And so um, very, it's, it's, a, it's a very prestigious award um, for businesses. And so I was very proud to have a Sherwood business recognized at that event. Um, this last Saturday, we had two uh, great benefits that I attended both. The Egg Hunt for Hope for Emma Onderud and uh, the Rose Family Fundraiser at the, um, put on by the Sherwood Dance Academy at the Sherwood High School. Both benefit um, citizens here in Sherwood who are fighting cancer. Um, so I was proud to be able to represent the city at both those events. Uh, this Thursday, uh, our federal congresswoman, Suzanne Bonamici, will be visiting Sherwood and I'll be giving her a tour of our new art center and also one of our great businesses in Sherwood. Um, I believe that we are going to Mud Puddles. So mm -hmm. that should be a lot of fun. Um, Congresswoman Bonamici has visited our town several times and I've had the opportunity to uh, be her guide and uh, so I'm excited to have her back to see our new art center. Okay. Um, Oh, I want to talk about the Arbor Day planting. So we're going to be having another Arbor Day planting coming Friday, 2.30, the terrace in Sherwood View Estates. So anyone who would like to join, 2.30, at the terrace in Sherwood View Estates, our Arbor Day planting event. I've done a lot of these. I can't even remember how many. Um, they are a lot of fun, even in the rain, but I believe that the forecast on Friday is sun. So um, even better because the ground is already wet for us, so it's nice and easy planting, um, but it won't be coming pouring down on us. So I hope that everybody can come because it's, it's a lot of fun to do these Arbor Day plants. On Saturday, I'm going to attend the Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue Volunteers Dinner, and um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, Tuesday, April 14th, library is going to have an open house for the staff and the electeds. Um, so they're going to kind of give us a tour of their facility. And uh, I'm sure that Councillor Harris will be right there um, pointing out all of the amazing things. <laughs> no? Oh, darn it all. Well, okay, I'll take notes. And, well, you already know about it anyway. Um, and then uh, at 6 p.m. on that same day, we're going to be having at the Center for the Arts our volunteer appreciation dinner. So that is all I had for this evening. So do I have a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.